Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that goes Willy Wonka for content. <laughs> Alternatively, if this is your first time seeing me, welcome to the channel. I don't get any funnier. Please subscribe. Most of you probably know Willy Wonka due to the various film adaptations that there have been since the original book was written. That alone may be news to some of you, that it was a book before it was a movie at all, but yes, it was. It was actually Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, penned in 1964 by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. Ro we're gonna call- we're, we're not gonna use his name much, so. But Mr. Dahl was a pretty pro- the Mr. Doll was a pretty prolific writer, pinning favorites such as James and the Giant Peach, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the fantastic Mr. Fox. He had banger after banger. But, 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 let me tell you about the canon novel sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, titled Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Originally published in the United States first in 1972, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator is bizarre, not actually having really anything to do with the Chocolate Factory anymore at this point. You know what, I'm, I'm not going to try to summarize it, I'm just going to jump into it because it, it starts out immediately insane, so whatever. Subscribe, I'm, I'm going in. At the beginning of this story, we pick up almost exactly where we left off at the end of the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, with the Great Glass Elevator slamming into the building and then him going, Hey guys, what's up, how you doing? I'm Willy Wonka, and they're like, whoa, that's cool, but we're still not getting up out of bed, which is the major plot point for this particular novel. These three grandparents, which, just in case you're wondering, are George, Georgina, and Josephine, all refuse to get out of bed, and they do so because they claim to be too old. However, I want to make it clear, refuse to get out of bed. Not that they can't, they refuse actively to be productive and to do things. They just want to lay in bed and rot. And I, you know what? Bed rotting's cool. I get that and all. But not when there's four of you all living in a one loft house, you know? Like, help some. Like, Grandpa Joe gets all the hate, but at least he finally does get out of bed. Wait, we'll get there. Refusing to get out of bed is why Wonka scoops up their entire bed and puts it inside of the great glass elevator with them. And then they go to space. IMMEDIATELY! <laughs> yes, they literally immediately depart from the chocolate factory and end up in space thanks to the power of the Great Glass Elevator. Admittedly, Josephine does have a panic attack and that's kind of what causes the controls to fly out, but they end up in space, orbiting the Earth. And at first I thought, okay, maybe this could be interesting. Maybe they could go to Loompa Land and, you know, see the locales there. Or they could go to other exotic places and find other exotic chocolates or other things. And no, they land at the space hotel commissioned by President Lancelot R. Gillygrass and the U.S. government. President Lancelot R. Gillygrass, the Vice President, and the President's best friend, who I assume is his lover, are all watching Wonka and the others arrive at the space station, and whenever they ask them, Hey, what the fuck are you? Why are you here? How do you know about this? Wonka goes, blah, 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 blah. And uh, then the President thinks they're from Mars and decides to invite them to the White House. I, I, like, I genuinely had to just, like, take a second there. Anyway, they're the first humans to arrive at this particular space hotel. And whenever they do arrive, they dock. Also, by the way, Willy Wonka knows all of this. Everything that I'm going to tell you is information that Willy Wonka already knows because he is, I guess, an eldritch being whose powers transcend imagination. And we just have sort of glimpsed the potential of his madness through the films and through these books. But anyway, Willy Wonka knows all of this and they land at the space hotel where they, um, they are but they're immediately attacked by vicious, brutal alien monsters who want to eat humans called the Vermicious Nids. Now, the Nids are important, or at least their name is, because it's a name that reoccurs in Roald Dahl's stuff, and it probably just translates to something like very bad thing in nonsense babble. There's also like a like an indie rock band called that. I don't know anything about them. I just saw that while doing research for this video. But yes, these vermicious nids are these monstrous blood-hungry man-eating aliens who really really want to eat aliens, but they've never been able to because of the Earth's atmosphere. The vermicious nids destroyed all life and all civilization on Mars and Venus as well, consuming everything there 
in leaving them the barren husks that they are today. Never mind that Venus has a thicker atmosphere than Earth, and it would kill them quicker, uh, but whatever, maybe that's a result of them doing their thing. Maybe they've turned it into their graveyard or their shithole, I don't know. Also, meteorites? Those are vermicious nids trying to land on Earth and consume as many people as possible. I'm sorry, it keeps going on, like it keeps getting stupider. Wonka also claims that the nids travel at a speed of over one million miles a day, just as like a casual, normal commute. Like, that's normal for them, that's an average, meaning that they can probably cover like a good 30 million miles a day easily if they really, really wanted to try. Despite the space hotel being unoccupied and not currently functioning, having no actual human occupants, the vermicious nids have already inhabited it, sneaking in and five of them burst out from the hotel, spelling out the only word they know with their bodies, which is the word scram, because they're very cocky and very stupid despite all their power. They, they clarify, Wonka knows this is the best time to run from the vermicious nids because it's the only chance you'll get. So they reboard the giant glass elevator, the great glass escalator, whatever the fuck it's called, and they leave. As they're leaving though, another shuttle arrives. Just so happens to be another shuttle coming at the exact same time that docks at the space hotel where the vermicious nids are already out and about. These are workers presumably coming to finish up or maybe start their very first shift at their brand new job at the space hotel, uh, but most of them are eaten immediately, like consumed by these worm monsters just drilling into their bodies and consuming their flesh. Still Willy Wonka, this is the same guy, same, same stuff. The shuttle begins to try to flee from these vermicious nids, but being that they are as fast as they are, they latch onto the ship pretty easily and start digging into it and damaging it however they can to try to get the humans inside. Wonka is fine leaving them to die, but Charlie being the good, good soul that he is, tells Wonka, hey, help him out, please, because your great glass elevator is nid-proof. And he's like, oh yeah, it is nid-proof, Charlie, how'd you know that? Which is when Charlie, of course, replies, I don't know, how do you know what a vermicious nid is? Then they save the people. They save all the remaining survivors, including three famous astronauts. They dock with the shuttle, bring them in, and then they re-enter Earth's atmosphere, burning the vermicious nids off of the elevator. Now, earlier, I failed to mention how whenever they first got to space, they could not return to Earth. They were stranded because the Great Glass Elevator could not land for some undisclosed reason. Now, all of a sudden, because the plot needs it to, it just can do all of this. It lands right back at the chocolate factory after burning all the vermicious nids off of it in the descent, and it's fine. It's totally okay. Cool. Well, fine. Whatever. Let's... <sighs> We're like halfway done. We can keep go We got this. So they land back at the chocolate factory being perfectly unscathed, unharmed, and otherwise unbothered. The grandparents, these scum of the earth pieces of filth that exist inside of the same household as Charlie Bucket, they still refuse to get out of bed. They're like, oh, whatever. I'm still too old. I don't wanna. Never mind that I've just been to space and zero gravity environment once of a lifetime experience. Not for me, I didn't ask for that, I'm old. Wonka says, okay, I bet. And then he gives them something called Vonkavite. Vonkavite is a de-aging formula, which causes them to de-age so rapidly that two of the grandparents, Josephine and George, have become babies. What about Georgina though? What happened to her? Oh, well that's interesting because she became negative two. And in becoming negative two, she vanishes to another dimension, going to a limbo-like reality. <laughs> going to a limbo-like reality called Minus Land. Minus Land is described as a dark, foggy place with a sort of oppressive and empty atmosphere where human spirits wait to be reborn after death, or in the case of Georgina, after unbirth or whatever. And at this point, this is whenever I've determined that Wonka genuinely is probably some Chthonic, Cthulhu-esque entity just masquerading. This Wonkavite would allow him to live virtually forever. He overdoses the grandparents with it, causing them to de-age like way further than necessary necessary, which is probably the dose he's used to taking himself. A lot more questions are raised than answered here about Wonka and his origins. The Wonka movie was probably, like, fine, but I want to know more about demonic, otherworldly entity Wonka, you know, it's, we've seen glimpses, just not quite enough. Wonka, being the eldritch entity that he is, opens a portal to Minus Land, which he can just do, where he knows all of the stuff that will happen here. He's been to Minus Land before. Wonka locates Georgina pretty easily, knowing his way 
around the place, and sprays her with the antidote to the Bonkavite, causing her to vanish again. At this point, their job is done, so they go to return to the chocolate factory, and just in time, too, because the Newlies are coming, and the Newlies are monsters that consume human souls, which will then cause them to both die and become Newlies themselves. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a sequel to Willy Wonka! When they arrive back at the Charlie factory, wait, when they arrive back at the chocolate factory, they've discovered that Georgina has become 358 years old in the time that they have been gone. And the thing is, Georgina remembers 358 years in the past, meaning her soul just existed way too early and she lived all of this up until this point retroactively being 358 years old but we're not going to talk about that that's not how time travel works here she just remembers it so whatever she's 358 i can't imagine her mind's at a great state to be perfectly honest wonka goes oh don't worry about it i got this and then gives her smaller doses of wonka bite like a few times which calls her to age through different periods of american history like the revolution the civil war things like that and then eventually returning back to her normal age also the two babies are fine like they're just they're just chilling there like george and josephine just feel great like they shit their pants and then they turned into babies like it's a great day wonka cures them and then immediately i clarify immediately because in every single thing that i've read about this it says immediately like the instant these babies are now adults again an oompa loompa arrives what what is he here for i i hope he sings a, like a little oompa loompa song or says something cool uh, he has a uh, an invitation to the White House from the President of the United States, Lancelot R. Gillygrass, uh, and it's, it's to Wonka for saving all of those wonderful people. Wonka, Charlie, and uh, Grandpa Joe. What's up, dude? He was prowling and I got a mythic. You got, what mythic was it? Oh, good job. I'm glad you did good though. Good job getting the crown. Give me a high five. Proud of you, kid. Kid got his fourth crown win. Make sure you congratulate him in the comments for me. Wonka, Charlie, and Grandpa Joe all board the Great Class Elevator with intentions on going to the White House. And guess what these fucking other human sacks of refuse decide to do? The ones that have been in bed all, all book. They get up! They're fine! They're totally okay! Because they don't want to miss meeting the President of the United States. They can suck the life out of their family and everything around them. They can be terrible people, like, they could just be lazy, you know, all of that's fine. They could be too old to get out of bed, but not for this. This is the president. This is something important. This is something that matters. They, of course, make a light little joke about it, and they say that they can't meet the president in their PJs, which they're still in, and they've probably been in for a long time. So Wonka goes to buy them clothes, and the book comes to a close. Thank fucking God. This was a bonkers thing to read about. This was a bananas adventure just to discover one day. And this wasn't really unusual with books at the time. There's actually a couple more that I want to cover after this one. This one was just the most aggressively like, what the fuck is go go like going on here. Notoriously, uh, Dahl really hated the film adaptation to the 1971 Willy Wonka. He really, really did not like it and how much it focused on Wonka instead of Charlie. A lot of deviations in the script and certain things like that also bugged him, which is why until he passed away, there were no other adaptations made. There probably would have been several more. I bring this up because this book was originally published in 1972, the year after that film was released. It had been eight years since the first one, and suddenly he decides to write another book after the film infuriated him so badly. And then you include the fact that it was published in the United States first, despite Dahl being a UK author. All of this leads me to believe that it was commentary of some sort, or it was meant as a attack against somebody, or something to that nature and that effect. I don't know what it is, though. I have no idea what point he was trying to make. Maybe the point was to write a book that was so stupid and insane, no one would want to make a sequel out of it, therefore ruining Willy Wonka forever. Apparently there was going to be a sequel, like Willy Wonka and the White House, or Charlie and the White House, or something like that. Maybe Charlie would have gotten the White House afterwards. But, you know, I mean, it's it, it, never, it never happened. Like, he, he wrote one chapter of it, and it's in his museum now, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it tremendously, as always. I... I like, I like this. I like doing things like this. It gives me an outlet for my energy. Like, it gives me something to do during the day, you know? And right now, Debbie's big fat ass is sitting on top of us out there. So, I mean, it's not like I can go anywhere or do anything. He, his first day of school was supposed to be tomorrow. And, like, they canceled that. So, whatevs, I guess. Anyway, y'all have a great rest of your night.